risk management in trading. So that's going to be one of the most boring things that we can ever do, right? But guess what's not boring? When the day doesn't go very well, and then you go on a tilt, and you have no idea when to stop based on any kind of systematic rules, any hard rules, and then you almost lose your shirt in one day. And for many people, that means losing your entire trading account in one day. From that perspective, yeah, that's exciting. So if that's the kind of excitement that you're after, then please uh, take somebody else's coat and leave the building. But for those of you who are looking for some tips on how to master or how to better your trading craft, then keep watching because today I'm going to show you how to find the daily loss limit and the position size based not on your personal results, but rather based on what the uh, actual market is doing. This will be a slightly different kind of simplified way to look at maximum price movements that happen most frequently. And because we'll be using this for day trading, I'm kind of modifying it a little bit. So we're going to be looking at probabilities because in effect, you really want to look at some hard data, actual facts about the instrument that you're trading. This measure is going to be a version of something called value at risk. But don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. I'm actually going to be looking at the simplest version of it rather than some, you know, super complex quantitative thing. <laughs> that no one can understand. Now, I would love to hear your thoughts about this video. So as you're watching, if you hear or see something that you find useful, feel free to put a comment below with any questions you may have, because I always answer questions from the comments. So you may want to take advantage of that. And of course, any interaction that you do with this video, liking, subscribing, commenting, it all helps to appease the wizards of the YouTube algorithm, and therefore it helps the channel. Okay, value at risk. So we're going to have a look at some Excel spreadsheets. I know. Uh, we're going to have a look at gold futures. Manny says, can we go play ball? <laughs> well, if you want treats and bickies, we're going to have to do value at risk first, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, before I go into the Excel spreadsheets, I do have to put my reading glasses. <coughs> because I'm old. A little bit of slurp of coffee. All right, let me share my screen. Uh, I like to use MetaTrader 5 via AMP Futures for this because you get the data for free. I use MetaTrader 5 via AMP Futures exclusively for this because these are real futures contracts. On the back end, they're offered by CQG, so this is why. And you can get free data. You don't have to pay for it. Okay, what you want to do is you want to go into Market Watch. If you can't see Market Watch, it will be in View. Market Watch, or you could just press Control M to bring it up. Then you want to find the instrument in question and you want a continuous chart. Where you're going to find history is by right clicking in the Market Watch, then going to Symbols, clicking on Bars, and then typing in the product that you're after. So this is Gold, Continuous Chart, Gold, Globex. I also want just the daily movement, okay? We're now in February 2023, but I'm gonna request a couple of years worth, or maybe just a little bit over. So let's go January the 1st until today, request. So now you have 674 bars, so I'm gonna export this into a CSV file. All right, so we're done with MetaTrader as far as this is concerned. And now I'm gonna bring up Excel. And whenever you're importing uh, a CSV file into an Excel sheet, you need to go blank workbook, then go into data, and then go from text slash CSV, okay? Otherwise, it's not going to put columns as separate columns. It's just going to put everything in one cell. Now, what you want to do, you want to go ahead and create an extra column with um, the percentage of movement that's going to represent the movement from the highest point of the day to the lowest price of the day. And how do you do that? Well, you find the high and low columns. So here there's C and D. Double click on the cell and say equals, open bracket, and then go from highest price, C2, minus lowest price, which is D2, close the bracket, and then divide that by the highest price, C2. So now that I click, um, I'm going to get a list of all of these percentages 
you may want to do some cleanup of the data. Because this is a continuous contract that I've dragged out straight from MetaTrader, uh, you will find that some days have just like zero percentage or they have like three or four contracts like in the volume section. You don't want that because first of all, uh, I don't want Sunday data either. So I will remove the days that represent Sundays and I will remove any 0.0% uh, day because all of that means is just picking up uh, contract rollovers and stuff. So you don't want that weirdness. So spend some time cleaning up this data, okay? Now, once you've done that, you want to create a histogram that is only going to show you this percentage of, of, of movement. What I'm doing here as well, you will notice that there's no minus or pluses. I'm just looking for absolute values. I'm not looking whether it's a sell day or a buy day. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in the largest movement on the day. You want to insert a chart. So the chart that you're after will be a histogram, this one here that has percentages on the side. So if you click on that, suddenly you have this graph, which I'm going to increase in size so you can see it nicely. So how do we use this? Well, the most number of days that have a 90% confidence of happening that will become your value at risk, uh, a movement that you can expect on 90% of the days. Okay, so that's the idea. Closely followed is a movement that goes all the way up to 1.4%. Finally, we have a massive fall off in frequency of occurrence. So you know, guys, when I'm talking to you on my daily live streams and I say things like, hey, uh, the market only has 30% of chance of going into a true unidirectional day where it just kind of shoots up or down and it doesn't come back. So why do I say 30%, 20%, 10%? It's because of this kind of analysis. Because you can see that these days of the market going close to 2% and over 2% or 3%, 4%, you know, completely crazy days where everything goes nuts, they have a really low incidence of occurrence. So if you're creating a strategy based on a single direction day where something just shoots up or down without looking back, you're going to be working with events that have about 2 to 5% probability. So how likely is it that that strategy is actually going to work for you? Not very likely, okay? But at the same time, you need to know the value at risk percentage, because by the time that the market reaches that level of movement on the day, if you're selling or buying at that point, you're at risk of buying the top or selling the bottom, which is never the best thing in trading. Any movement that occurs very frequently, that would represent the norm, okay? Anything outside of that is an outlier. Now, these are facts. I'm not making this up. Okay, I'm not sitting here and going, well, I think it's going to move that much. No, I have actual numbers and factual data about the market that I'm trying to trade. Retail traders, when they come to think about trading, they don't go, hmm, I wonder what VAR is uh, for this particular product. No. How do they trade? They sit to do a trade and they go, ah, it's moving. I must get in. There's not much data or factual or systematic methodology behind it. So this is what I'm trying to do for you guys to give you a little bit more education behind using the actual facts about the market. That's what gives you the edge, right? Now, going one step further, we can now devise a position size and a daily loss limit based on this data, right? Which means for... This sort of style of risk management, technically you don't even need a hard stop loss, but you do need a position size that is small enough to handle this kind of movement on the day without blowing your entire account. Personally, I am a fan of hard stops, but whenever I'm trading my larger prop accounts and stuff, using hard stops becomes a little bit harder <laughs> because the way the central exchange works is they prioritize smaller uh, smaller positions. So if you're in with just one position size, like one contract, uh, if your stop loss is hit, your stop loss will be uh, filled immediately. But if you're in with 80 lot size, it's very likely that they're first going to fill all the smaller amounts. Once the target gets reached or the stop loss gets reached or my idea of a stop loss, I then start to scale out of the position because you won't be able to close it uh, either side all in one go. Okay. Whoever tells you Trading with size is easy. 
I can guarantee you that they've never traded with size. Now let's go to the chart once again, just to explain something else about the percentages. If I measure the percentage of movement, 1% movement is right now about 180 ticks. But if I go back to COVID when everything was going nuts, and if I then also measure 1%, you will see that that is going to be different. So if I now measure the percentage of movement here, you can see that that's actually come down to 158 ticks. So it's like, what gives? Like 1%? Why isn't that the same? Well, it's because the percentages of market movement will be measured based on how much liquidity there is. So it's kind of like a moving average. So it's a scalable measure. It's not always going to be the same. And if you have a lot of movement, then obviously the 1% is going to represent a smaller chunk of the overall liquidity. Right now, things have kind of gone back to some normality, even though we had two very abnormal days thanks to the Fed rate decision and the NFP numbers. Just keep that in mind that 1% movement is not always going to have the same amount of ticks. So let's say that you want to find a daily loss limit based on this. You need to have a position small enough that will be able to withstand the 1.14 percentage of movement. So right now, that would mean about 214 ticks. So 214 ticks times 10 means that you would need to have a daily loss limit of 2,140. So you shouldn't be trading full contracts unless your account size can handle two grand's worth of drawdown on any single day. Why? Because 90% of days will have that kind of movement. So if you want to trade without stop losses, that's perfectly fine, but just keep in mind this number. Now, obviously, if you're trading micros, the sizes are 10 times smaller, so you will only need $214. This measure is a good way to ensure that you're not trading too large. Now, obviously, this is not a perfect measure. You can have an outlier day, and this is where you have to know whether there is a high-risk event happening. So you will be in trouble if you, uh, if you don't know that there is a very volatile release about to happen, like the Fed rate decision, for example. Even if you're not necessarily planning to use a stop loss of any kind, I would still say maybe you want to have a hard stop based on these numbers, so based on those 214 ticks, uh, just in case something happens, you might lose the internet connection, your rhythmic feed on your prop firm account might fritz out for whatever reason. So it's always good to have some kind of a disaster stop loss, even if you don't want to use those type of stops. I know a lot of traders who don't like paying retail prices, so they're looking for reversal trades almost exclusively. Now, this is where value at risk can help you as well. Rather than just looking at an isolated ATR measure, or even an average session range measure, which is my concept, you might want to wait until the market gets to that value at risk percentage and then look at what's around. So whether you can find a level that's high probability reversal level, whether that's a supply and demand zone or ATR or ASR, it will give you more of a chance to find the reversal trade once the market has moved that much because value at risk doesn't tell you how much the market pulls back after it reached that. All it says is that on any given day, the market may move 1.14% from high to low. Okay, so again, not a perfect measure, but it gives you a lot more of an edge rather than just turning up every day, randomly staring at the chart, clicking buttons, and then hoping that somehow, magically, you're just going to get better at this. <laughs> you have to know the probabilities of everything. That is the big secret. That there is no secret. Now, if you're looking to learn a professional trading method that has these sort of probabilities behind it, have a look at the Marcus Talkers method. You will find the link down below this video in the description box. And there's also a very nice Valentine's Day discount for you uh, so that you can stop flirting with the price and start making all the right moves towards commitment to your trading craft. That's it for now. Let's strive to be less of a Muppet and more of a Marcus Talker with every passing day. <laughs> Goodbye.